Hello and welcome to today's painting tutorial which is a speed painting guide for Slaves to Darkness Chaos Warriors in their classic metallic armoured scheme. Well a dark metallic armour. And also it's not really a speed painting guide, it's just painting them quickly because you want these guys to look really nice on the table, especially given they've got a brand new shiny box coming out towards the end of the year. So let's get started and learn how to make them look really, really good in about 45 minutes. As always, undercoat your model. In this case, I've undercoated it black, which gives us a nice dark base to start with, given the whole model is going to be quite dark. First two colours you're going to need mixed together are Iron Warriors and Abaddon Black. All we're going to do is add in a tiny little bit of black into our Iron Warriors on our palette. You probably need about three Iron Warriors to one black. We just want to darken it down a little bit more without losing its metallic consistency. Mix that together on the palette, add a little bit of water and you're good to go. So use our nice dark metallic colour to paint in all of the armour on your model. So his helmet, his shoulder pads, his elbow pads, his chest plate, his greaves, any chain mail. But don't paint the sword because we're going to paint that slightly brighter afterwards. Once you've done that your model's going to look like this for reference. I've also painted in the shield as well because it's going to be the same colour. After that you're going to need lead belcher and we're going to use that to paint in any brighter metallic areas. So in this case I'm just going to paint in the blade of the sword. Next you're going to need to equip yourself with Zandri Dust and we're going to use that to paint in all of the cloak front and back, any hanging bone details or skulls or whatever's hanging off their armour and then the horns on their helmet. It's important to note that when you're painting Zandri Dust over black because it's such a dark colour and Zandri Dust is quite a transparent paint, it means you'll need to give it a couple of thin layers as opposed to scooping it out of the pot and sponging it onto your model. Also, if you're really, really inaccurate at painting, you can absolutely paint this stage first and then paint the armour afterwards if you think you're going to make a massive mess. But it's totally up to you. When you finish those two thin coats, your model's going to look like this. A nice solid colour across all of those areas we want to be Zandri Dust. Next up you're going to need Retributor Armour and Lead Belcher mixed together. The ratio you want to use when mixing them is about 3 Retributor Armour to 1 Lead Belcher. And the reason we're doing this is to take the redness out of the gold and to make the gold look a bit more ancient. It looks much better over the top of Iron Warriors if you just take that redness out a bit. And this is how we're going to achieve that without having to buy any other paints or use things like Liberator Gold which don't go on first time very easily. Once those are mixed, we're going to paint in some of the details on the model. In this case, I'm going to paint in the chaos icons on the sword, the sword hilt, the end of the sword, and any other gold details I can find on the model. It's going to vary from model to model because they're all wearing different stuff. But anything that you'd like to be gold, stick this on. Also importantly, and probably the biggest area of gold you're going to use, is on the chaos iconography on the front of the shield. And for reference, this is what my model looks like with all of the gold done. Next we're going to use Rhinox Hide, we're going to use that to paint in any leather details, but we're not going to paint in the boots and we're not going to paint in the gloves because we want those to be black to keep with the aesthetic. But everything else, so the any leather belts, any other straps that are holding the armour on, we're going to paint those with Rhinox Hide. And we're also going to paint the fur going around the top of the cloak. Next we're going to switch to Abaddon Black and we're going to use that to paint in the black areas. I know we've undercoated it black, but sometimes the black comes out more of a dark grey. So to make sure that it's nice and black, we're going to paint over it. In this case, I painted his left gauntlet with Iron Warriors, which was a mistake because actually he's wearing black leather gloves. So I'm having to correct that now. But it might be that in the process of painting his cloak, you've got Zandri Dust all down the back of his foot. So just use Abaddon Black now to make sure that all the black areas are nice and black. Once you're done with your black, get your Rakarth Flesh. We're going to use that for one single job, which is to paint in the cloth that's bound around the handle of the sword. You can only see a little bit poking out between his gloves and the rest of the gold. You don't have to do this, you could just leave it black if you wanted to, or you could paint it Zandri Dust. I've just decided to paint it a different colour. Totally your call. Next it's time to switch to Nuln Oil and we're going to use that to do all of the armour, all of the fur, his shield and his weapon. The only thing we're not going to do is the cloak and the horns because we're going to use Agrax Earthshade for that. 
As always, apply it liberally, but not so liberally that it's running off your model and all over your hands and carpet and pets. Now grab your Agrax Earthshade and a detail brush and we're going to paint in the recesses of the cloak. Now you might be wondering why I'm not just putting it all over the cloak and it's actually because that doesn't really achieve the effects we want. This is actually, believe it or not, quicker than doing that. All you're going to do is get your Agrax Earthshade on your detail brush and you're just going to paint in the obvious deep recesses in the back of the cloak and that is going to highlight the folds and it's going to make it stand out nicely. Also paint in all the little rips and tears that's on the cloak and that will make those stand out a little bit more as well. But this neat little simple trick is going to make the whole thing look like you spent more effort on it than you actually have. Once you're done with the cloak then switch to the horns and just cover those in Agrax Earthshade. Now you're going to need some Stormhost Silver and we're going to do some highlighting. You're going to need your detail brush and what we're going to do is edge highlight all of the armour. Now you might think why in a speed painting video are you telling me to highlight something you stupid British wanker. But the actual reason is because this is the thing that makes this armour stand out. It is the traditional the classic slaves to darkness look is these bright silver edges to the armor trim trust me do it it looks great be nice and careful keep an edge on your brush and just go around the very sharpest edges of all the metal make it all stand out go around the edge of the shield go around the eyes on the helmet go around the edge of the helmet round his pauldrons the lot it looks great and here, as promised, as assured, is what it looks like when it's done. You see I've gone over the gold as well with a little edge highlight of Stormhose Silver. And the whole thing looks great, just like the box art on the old Slaves to Darkness video. Once you're done with all of that, get your Doom Bull Brown and a dry brush. And all we're going to do is dry brush the fur around his shoulders. And that's going to make it stand out a nice ready brown, like he's fought a bear. And in fact, this one does actually have a bear claw hanging from his back. So he has four bear. Now you'll need some Eshin Grey and we're going to use that for one simple job and that is to highlight the grey areas. We're going to use that to highlight the fingers on his gloves, around the edge of his gloves, around his boots, across the top of his boots, anywhere there's a sharp edge on any of that black stuff, just give it a good highlight with Eshin Grey. You don't need to spend all day doing this, you just need to give it a little bit of a spruce up so that at a distance when it's on the table it looks like you put some effort in. But you haven't really. Next we can use Gorthor Brown and in a very similar fashion to what we just used Eshin Grey, we're going to highlight some of the belt and leather details. So anywhere that you have used Rhinox Hide on some leather, you're going to use Gorthor Brown to highlight it. It doesn't need to take very long at all, just some quick lines, swish swish, make it look great, move on. Next we're going to grab our Ushabti Bone, we're going to use that to do some tactical highlighting on the back of the cloak. We're not going to do some wonderful blended gradients from light to dark as the cloak dips in and out of light shining across it, no. All we're going to do is get the sharpest ridges and we're going to highlight it with Ushabti Bone. It might take you a couple of layers on each of your highlights because Ushabti Bone can be a bit shit when it's coming straight out the pot. And it's even worse when it's watered down, so uh, take your time, do it nicely and uh, everything will look lovely. And here we are, finished. This is our Chaos Warrior, all done in that classic Slaves to Darkness scheme and ready to hit the tabletop once you've based it. Here's a picture of mine all done. I've based mine using Sterling Mud, put Nuln Oil all over it once it had dried, dry brushed it with Bane Blade Brown and a light dry brush of Zandri Dust, and then I stuck a tuft on it and all done. If you want to paint your Chaos Knights in the same way, you absolutely can. Just paint all of the horse's armour with that Iron Warriors and Abaddon Black mix that we made. All I did for the straps and any uh, horsehair fur coming out of the armour was to use Mephiston Red, Agrax Earthshade, and then give it a little highlight with Wild Rider Red. Now, a bit of a strange one for the end of this video, but this channel is aimed at people like me who are dads with kids, with wives, with long-term partners, or just who live by themselves and don't have a lot of time to paint models. Um, and I know that when some people watch this, they probably think, oh, it all looks very peaceful. He's just sitting there painting, just doing his thing. But I thought I'd include, just for bands, some of the background ambient noise that's included in my videos whilst I'm sitting painting, just for your amusement for the end of the video. So enjoy, and thanks for watching. 
Thankfully, I got up with those pictures through yesterday and I look like a fucking beached whale in those events. No, so. you don't. Oh, I just didn't show you them. <laughs> There's a lot where I... Some of them, I was like, who's that? Oh my god, it's me. Like, I don't even recognise how fucking fat I am at the minute. Please leave that in. Now I am 100% sure that many of you can relate. Happy Wargaming, thanks again for watching, like, subscribe, do all of that stuff, and I'll see you again soon with another helpful speed painting guide.